Hey everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you how to create all the textures that I've made for this decal material on the floor, okay? So let me actually bring that decal onto the scene so we can take a closer look. And on my second screen now I'm gonna enable all the settings I've got for it to be actually visible. So I've got a couple masks here uh, let me get the files right so we've got a diffuse texture we've got a, a height map and also a mask for the emissive and here is actually the height map uh, for it and the normal up as well so let me disable the uh, emissive intensity for it so you can take a closer look how it looks without any emissive Okay, so we're gonna dive into Substance, we're gonna try to recreate it. Obviously, it's not gonna be the same, but I'll try to keep it as close as possible and hopefully you're gonna pick up a few techniques how to create your own decals, which you can obviously use in your uh, projects. All right, so let's dive into Substance and let's start exploring. This will be a two-part video because I think it's gonna be uh, quite a long tutorial. So I'll try to split it into two parts so we can cover a lot of details in that video and if you would like to learn how to make this whole sequence of this uh, hammer impact with all the uh, decal variables being changed in the blueprint with all the vfx that you can actually see on um, screen here including the cast you can subscribe uh, onto this content where i cover everything from scratch Okay, so there will be a lot of elements, so stay with me. Uh, first, maybe uh, let's try to get some main shapes. So I'm going to get a padlet noise, uh, from which I'm going to extract the uh, uh, a line, which I mostly use for trails. So I'm going to use cross section for this. I'm going to change this to mirror gradient, and I'm going to scale down the pedal and noise just so I get a, uh, some cool lines. I'm gonna use the cross selection. I'm looking for something that is uh, fairly straight, so maybe something like this. Uh, so I don't have uh, too much of that wavy pattern. Uh, next, I'm gonna use histogram scan so I can actually extract this shape. And I need this to be a tiny line because that's going to be my foundation for the cracks. Uh, next, I need to use trapezoid. However, first I need to rotate this. So I'm going to get transform. I'm going to rotate 90 degree. And next, I'm going to use trapezoid. And here, I'm just going to stretch the top to the max. And I'm going to disable the tiling as well because I don't need it. And I'm going to apply some warp to it. Uh, using the um, maybe let's get cells this time cells 3 nope I think I'm gonna need different cells uh, cells 4 I'm gonna apply some blur to it uh, default for now apply to warp and now I can come here scale it down slightly play with the blur as well in case I want some uh, sharp edges and in here I'm just gonna play with this intensity just to distort that shape a little bit. Also gonna come here and play with the disorder so I could guess like a different variation of it. I think I need a little bit more blur. Okay, so as you can see, just a minimal warp and to be honest, I don't know if we're actually gonna use it, but let's add it and obviously we can come back here later and get rid of it. All right, next I actually wanna use, um, let's get maybe splatter. Uh, splatter, uh, splatter circular. I'm gonna plug it into the pattern, get rid of the one from the background, double click, and I'm gonna use the pattern input. 
cool. For the amount, let's go with the default for now. And let's tone down the radius. Okay, spread. Just gonna put some random values here. Okay. I think I'm looking for the size, which is here. Scale, rather. Okay, size is random as well, but only on one axis. Maybe on that one as well, but not too much, just a little, because I don't want to uh, distort the center of it too much. And in here we've got the symmetry random as well. However, I only want to try maybe horizontal, so our pointy ends will always be uh, there. I'm going to apply some scale random as well, although not too much. I'm going to try different options just to see what they're going to give it, uh, what they're going to give me. Definitely not their rotation, uh, maybe ring rotation, random maybe halfway through, and then we can go back to the beginning and play with the rings settings maybe. Ring amount. Okay, we can plug in different patterns, I suppose. Maybe a uh, radius random a little bit angle as well I'm not gonna touch the spiral that one no as well so let me just go down maybe to the size and I would like to maybe increase this slightly okay and there's the radius extend this and go back to size scale it down a little bit so I don't go over um, the edges of the texture. Alright, so I would say those are the main uh, shapes. Obviously we're gonna come back to it later on and tweak it. Uh, for now let's maybe add now uh, a background shapes to it. So let me get a cells tree this time. I'm gonna use uh, edge detect play with that edge width, get rid of the roundness and I'm gonna scale it down and maybe to something like this I'm gonna increase the edge width I'm gonna use also multi-directional warp grayscale and in here I'm just gonna place the cells that we used before which is 4, run it through blur oops, blur high quality and plug it into the uh, directional warp. Increase it. I'm gonna play with different settings to see what they're gonna bring me. I think max might work okay. But I don't need much, I just wanna distort it slightly to get uneven distribution between the uh, edges. I think that's gonna work okay. I'm gonna try slope as well. So slope, uh, blur, grayscale, and for this one, I'm going to use Berlin Noise. Obviously, not that much. So scale, small scale as well for the Berlin Noise. And maybe something like this. I'm going to increase the samples here. And try different settings as well. Okay, maybe something like this. Cool. I'm going to use Shape Mapper to wrap it around the circle, minimum radius, maximum width, pattern amount, I think something that we have to experiment with, I need quite the details uh, here, so I'm just gonna use something like this, I'm gonna invert this grayscale, I'm gonna use a bevel next, with a minus distance just to cut into those edges and as you can see it's gonna give us really nice crack looking like uh, edges. I think it's a bit too much so I'm gonna put manually 0.5 and I'm just gonna use this and blend it with a soft circle to get rid of the white uh, bits on the edges. Okay, that's gonna be uh, maybe multiply 
and I'm gonna change this to soft circle and scale it a little bit down. Okay, let's see if we can blend this in to our main shape. So here I'm gonna use blend. For the blending mode, I'm just gonna use max maybe for now. Okay, so I think this background bit, I think I want those to be slightly more detailed and I need a lot more of those. I'm gonna go back to my shape mapper maybe, increase the number of patterns Play with the radius or maybe width, I think. And I hope something like this could work. If I need to scale it down, I can use this shape. And it's gonna scale down my visibility. And if I need those cracks to be slightly bigger, I can go to my edge detect and increase the edge width. As you can see, it's gonna give us really nice results, I think. Okay, so the last bit I want to add will be the circular patterns that are going to go around and after this I think we're going to start creating the material and use it here. So I'm going to change that to maybe plain high resolution so we can actually preview how it might look in the game. And here I'm going to change the environment as well, rotate it slightly so we get a highlight on our normal map. I'm not going to play with the exposure for now. Okay, so first let's create that um, circular patterns uh, on that texture. So I'm going to need this line again, and I think I'm just going to copy the setup that we already got, uh, which is this. Uh, and let me play with the disorder maybe. I'm going to add slight scale to it as well. And I'm going to pick maybe better cross section. Now let's try something like this maybe. All right, next I'm just going to use a, uh, a shape mapper. And as you can see, by default, we already got the circular pattern. Now we can just play with the uh, pattern amount, play with the radius, uh, width, and also with the rotation. Okay, so I'm just going to copy three of those. And I'm going to use bevel as well for each. Uh, with the minus values because I just want to cut into that shape a little bit. Copy, replug it everywhere and just blend them together. And I'm going to use simple add option here. All right, I'm going to copy that one over here. That one goes there and now we should have all three. I'm going to go to second shape mapper, scale it down slightly, add some rotation to it, make it a bit more random. And the third one, scale it way back, even using the width with some random as well. I'm going to change the maybe a pattern amount. And for the second one, I'm going to do the same. So check, uh, change the pattern amount slightly. And I think I'm going to play with the bevel a little bit, because obviously when we're scaling them, that one's got a little bit too much bevel now. And I'm going to maintain that highlight in the middle. Perfect. Now let's blend it back together into our main shapes. I'm going to use Max for this. And as you can see, they kind of fit uh, nicely. Okay, so the idea here is that I want my main cracks to go a little bit more than our rings. Our rings needs to sit within that uh, crack pattern. And also we've got our detail cracks and they can actually go a little bit more than the main cracks. Right, so let's extract this shape using the histogram scan. So I'm going to ramp up the position, contrast as well. But actually, I don't need contrast, so just the position maybe. And that would be our main shape. All right, so next let's create our uh, base material. So I'm going to get our base material here. I'm going to scroll down, enable all the options we've got here. That will be for height, diameter occlusion, metallic roughness, normal, and base color. I'm going to right click and apply it to our 3D view. Okay, so right now it looks kind of broken, but it's fine. Let's get gradient map. I'm going to get rid of this black color at the end. Keep it a gray. Let's go to 
ambient occlusion. I'm going to change it to grayscale. So now it's kind of looking okay. And I'm going to copy the gradient node two times. I'm going to get rid of that gray color because I want to maintain the white. And that's going to go to roughness. And another one actually is going to go to our metallic. And let me see if I can change it to black. Okay, let's go with white for now. And same for the base color. And but this one we're gonna change to color mode color. And now we should have very basic uh, plane now. Okay, so in here, go to scene, pick the high resolution plane. You can play with the environment as well. But I kinda wanna, for now, because I don't have any normal map yet, just wanna play with it as is. Alright, so let's make some space with our setup because we'll be adding a bunch of stuff to it and let's see if we can first get our normal map and height map done so we can focus on the colors and maybe some emission maps as well. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna grab our mask. I'm gonna get a bevel, put some minus values to it just so I can see all the cracks and stuff. But with the bevel, maybe something like this. Okay, and that should give me height and normal. So I'm just gonna bring that closer. That's gonna go to height map. That's going to be my normal map. You can see it kind of affects uh, our viewport here. And uh, let's go maybe to material, edit. And here we've got height scale. I'm going to actually put this on to minus 5. Desolation factor, maybe I'm just going to apply 4 here. Okay, now next let me bring in the environment so I can rotate it slightly and get a better angle of it and look. Okay, so this is our very basic normal map. I think it requires some tweaking, so let me go back to our uh, maybe uh, those. I'm gonna go to histogram, scale it down slightly. Those will be our main cracks, and I need our detail cracks to be a bit more visible. So go to the edge width and increase it slightly for the visibility. Okay, so that is the very basic idea, I think. And and because that video is already long, uh, let's pick this up in the part two. And where we're actually gonna add a bit more details to it and make it look a lot better and we can focus on the colors as well. Alright, see you in the next part.